Hello friends and welcome to my channel. This time I wanted to show you this Edwardian girl's bodice. This is something I bought in December and already when I bought it I was planning to replicate it. Before showing how I replicated it I want to show how it's constructed. Construction of a bodice was very different in Edwardian era than it is today. This bodice is way too small for me. It has been meant for a girl in her early teens or even younger. It is a little bit too big for my 11 year old, but it's pretty close. This dress form is actually pretty much her size. This bodice is made of linen and it has a cotton lining. It has lace, yoke and a collar and it has this silk edged sailor collar too. There are nice pleated detail at the sleeves and the whole front has this fullness that is typical for an early Edwardian era. It has originally been fastened to the skirt, which shows as uh, these hooks at the back. There is this uh, box pleat at the center back and the collar fastens here. But let's open it up and see how it looks like. So first there's this hook and eye in here. And then there are rows of snaps underneath the sleeve, like this. So let's open them up. Like this. Then let's open the collar. The collar is fastened with snaps in here. I'm being really careful with the snaps so that I don't put any strain on the actual fabric. So I'm putting my fingernails between the two halves of the snap there and then there are four snaps at the shoulder I haven't closed them all so it's a little bit faster to take off like so so now we can turn this off and here we can see the lining so the lining is more form-fitting than the front and it closes at the center front it has these hooks and eyes so that they alternate so that there is an eye a hook an eye a hook and so on and so forth so this fastening doesn't come off easily okay let's look at the color at first so the color has this interesting shape so it has it's rounded in here and it has these points down here and it has been decorated with this silk ribbon that is in an excellent condition considering the age of this garment. This lace is not very expensive looking. It looks like it came from a you know curtain but as this is a child's garment perhaps they didn't want to use an expensive fabric for the collar and the yoke but it has cotton underneath so that it doesn't show through this uh, top fabric has been draped over this cotton lining at the front at the back it's pretty form-fitting although there is this pleat on the outer fabric and it has been flat lined with the cotton with this quite interesting way of finishing the seams I don't know what it is called it's almost like a French seam but these seams have been hand finished here so it's like the edge of the seam allowance has been turned inward and then the seam allowances have been whipped together there is um, a bit similar looking finish at the center back seam so it's like a French seam but it has been sewn from the top all the stitching details are visible on the wrong side since everything has been anchored to the lining. The front has two darts and the left hand side has been covered with a narrow piece of the linen fabric so that the lining doesn't show here where it's fastened. But there is no dart at the front of this strip so it's just on the lining. This hook and eye um, strip has been made in a curious way so there is like this about five centimeters wide piece of fabric that has been stitched this side then turn to the wrong side and then the hooks and eyes are sewn on and then the edge of the facing has been turned about the width of the seam allowance and then whipped to this edge by hand it took me a while to figure out how it was done the color lining has been completely hand sewn and here is the interesting thing this right hand side because this is quite thin linen 
to anchor the yoke, you have to have some kind of support. So they have added a piece of lining fabric to the top part where it doesn't interfere with the gathers. This edge has been finished with the bias binding, but on the other places, in the hem and on this side the strip has been cut straight. The shoulder seams they are not so neat as the side seams which have been finished by hand and similarly the sleeves have been sewn on with the machine and then the edge has been whipped. The lining of the sleeve seems to be about as big as the top fabric except that the top fabric has those pleats so it's not like sometimes when you see that the sleeve lining is much smaller and the top fabric forms the puff the sleeve is cut in two parts which makes it really nicely fitting only the top part has this pleated detail at the elbow there is just a tiny little, tiny little pleat to give room for the elbow but otherwise it's just a normal two-piece sleeve. The maker of this bodice hasn't really tried to make this super fancy so she has taken shortcuts. Like here, the yoke has been just stitched on, there is no finishing and there is just the raw edge of the cotton and the lace visible but it's covered with the color so it doesn't show. Also the pleating here has been done really unevenly. Everything has been just pleated so that it sort of fits but there is no symmetry whatsoever. There is a bunch of pleats in here and some in the middle and much less on the right hand side. Also when I was taking the pattern I noticed that these pleats at the hem are really asymmetric. There's one big box pleat in here, then there's a second pleat. Um, this pleat that it's um, shaped more like a dart, so it's basically pointing towards the middle. But on the other side, there really isn't anything. There's just a small, small tuck in here, but it's not really a pleat. So I don't know what she has been thinking. Perhaps it's just a, it doesn't matter. Nobody is looking at this so carefully. There are some holes in the fabric in here and in here the fabric might have been caught to something because otherwise the fabric is in really excellent condition and it feels really strong and sturdy. Here you can see the hooks, they have been in a big strain because they have opened up quite a lot so probably the skirts are heavy or just sitting on the skirts have been pulling these hooks open. They have been really really strongly stitched on as you can see there are so many stitches like here. It's really hard to tell whether there has been a hook at the front. It's This is just a sewing error. The seamstress has sewn over the edge and then jumped back in. And there is the place where the stitching hasn't caught the tape. So it's been done so and so at several places. But really it doesn't take much away from this garment because it just shows that People weren't really as nitpicky as you might imagine if you are reading Victorian or Edwardian sewing manuals. In practice, people have been taking shortcuts. Um, there are hanging loops which you can use when you hang this on the both sides. Oh, where's, where's the second one? Or is there a second one? Uh, actually, no. Another one is missing. Oh, perhaps. It never was there. Perhaps just one helps to keep it on the cloth hanger. Uh, the collar also has a raw edge that is just turned under and the collar has been then top stitched in place. Also this edge has the raw edge visible. It hasn't even been whipped. Only the edge has been whipped so that it's easier to add the snaps. On the other side, yeah this is much neater because dish opens up and it's more visible. This has been slip stitched in place and there's a little thread bar in here and a little hook in here where the collar fastens keep it in place. So I had to think carefully how to take the pattern from this. The stripy pattern really helps with this job because it shows where the straight line is. The same is true about this lace. This lace yoke is a bit wonky but if you are looking at it carefully you can see that it has been cut straight but it's just that during the use and washes it has sort of lost its shape. 
A while ago I was watching Abby Cox's video about taking patterns by pinning it on a soft board and I thought it was really genius way of doing it. So I used that method to take pattern from the main parts, those parts that were easy to spread flat, like the back piece and the yokes and the collar and the lining parts. But the problem arose when I had to take the pattern from the sleeves. Since the sleeves are so narrow, it's hard to spread them flat. Well, you cannot really spread them flat, but even if you are sort of keeping, keep turning it, it's really cumbersome and the pattern I came up with didn't really work at all. It didn't look like a sleeve. So what I then did is I drew the stripe pattern on a piece of paper and started measuring straight angles from these stripes. So like here, you can see that there's like one and a half centimeters from this blue stripe to this corner here. And then you can calculate how long this stripe is. And yeah, it's pretty long. It goes all the way to the elbow. So you can follow this stripe pretty much. And then you can calculate from this point over the whole sleeve. And this way go through the whole sleeve drawing the pattern on a grid that is determined by the stripe width. And that worked really nicely. I ignored the pleats at this point because they are, well, basically they are just uh, folded straight. Although they might be a little bit fun wonky like here, but it's not really meant to be like that. It's just that it has been ironed a bit bit sideways. So that worked really well. I was able to get a good pattern of the sleeves that way. And I also used, the, used that method to take the pattern from the yoke, because the yoke consists of these square lace pieces and just measuring one of these and then using that to calculate the position of these points around the collar and at the bottom of the yoke. And that worked. Um, I also used that stripe method for this front drapey part. So this is actually a little bit curved, which I noticed when I was following the straight line of a thread. So I estimated how the straight thread goes like this and then started measuring position of the pleats. The pattern I ended up with was of course a bit asymmetric because of the asymmetry of this blouse. And my mind couldn't really take it. So what I did then is I sort of corrected the pattern and made it symmetric to make it much easier to sew. I also had to fit this for my daughter, which meant that I ended up taking like four centimeters from the back length and about the same amount from the sleeves or perhaps a little bit more from the sleeves. And also I moved the elbow a bit. Here Is my replica and I want to show it flat because then you can sort of see some of the features that are in here that are on the original bodies. I used a uh, stripe linen fabric. This is slightly th thicker than the fabric used in the original blouse and I didn't use silk to finish these edges. This is just a blue bias tape. This lace fabric came from my, my old skirt so it's probably not cotton but it was close enough for the original lace so I ended up using it because I didn't wear the skirt anymore. Here you can see the structure that closes the center front. So I used my zigzag uh, from my, of my modern machine to sew these hooks and eyes on because there are so many of them. But here you can see the facing that goes on here and it really otherwise is similar to the one in the original except that I probably may have one less who can I because this body is shorter. And the other difference is that I used a bias tape in here. Well, nobody would know, and even you wouldn't probably notice it unless I told you. I added the pleats here and I sewed this whole thing, except the hooks and eyes, with my Threadle Singer machine to really get to know the way it was originally done. Here is the other side. You know, I couldn't leave this just raw. I whipped it and it closes in here. Mm, I had to learn a new way of constructing these bodies by 
first fitting the lining and I actually basted it together and I fitted it on my daughter and I they then took the basting away in order to flatline the back piece and to add this piece in here and then I could sew the shoulder seams. I cut the draped front bodies originally much bigger so I only cut rest of it off after I had joined the yoke to the front just to reduce the bulk. But as you can see here my pleats are much more regular than they were in the original blouse. Also here at the bottom I have one big pleat in here and then there I have pleats at the sides and then I have this kind of tilted pleat in here and in here. So I just couldn't handle asymmetry. <laughs> but as you can see, there is a really historically accurate place where I actually dropped away from my <laughs> tape in here. I made a very simple rectangular gathered skirt to go with the bodies. Adding a straw hat and a blue belt made a really nice outfit for a spring day.